that song was for you. God is still looking for you. God is still looking for you. God is not like a man who abandons people. He can be patient. You roam around your life running away from God, but you are still a prophet. That mantle is still hovering around you. You roam around running away from God, but you are still an evangelist. Those souls are still coming. You've not opened your mouth and told God no. And because you've not told him no, he is still patient. He is still patient. He's saying you are still Esther. He's saying you are still Deborah. He's saying you are still Abraham. You are still Gideon. Provided you've not opened your mouth to reject the call, he will still chase after you. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will kick down, lie you will fear. Hallelujah. Please hear me. I'm prophesying to someone. God is saying, I should tell you, when you were between the age of 13 and 18, you, you had dreams. You had a notebook where you wrote those dreams. And God is saying that you have rejected the call, but that he's calling you now. I'm not saying this to everybody. Between the age of 13 and 18, you were having visionary encounters. God will come to you. He showed you things. You asked pastors questions they could not answer. That thing was a call. It was a mantle upon your life. And now, after many years, you try to run away from church, but God has brought you back. You try to do your own thing to live your life. God is saying, I'm still calling you. I'm still calling you to return unto me. And I'm telling you prophetically, you can choose to reject the call, but he's stretching his hands tonight. Return back to that call. 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 You can reject him, but he's stretching his hands. Return back to that call. Those visions were not a waste. The dreams you saw were not a waste. The programs you went to were not a waste. The videos you watched were not a waste. Someone shout again, say, here am I, send me, here am I, send me, I am available, I am willing, I am yielded, I am available, I am willing, I am yielded. Listen, listen, listen. Please, I want you to listen to me. I will return back preaching, but I'm prophesying now. I want you to listen to me. I'm hearing in my spirit again. This is particularly to a lady. This is particularly to a lady. The Lord is telling me that I should tell you that there is a healing ministry God promised you. A healing ministry He gave you. But until now, you have not opened up your spirit to receive that anointing. It's a healing ministry. Not just a teaching ministry. Not just a prophetic ministry. It's a mighty healing ministry. You have seen this many times. Prophetic words have come concerning it. But you see, let me tell you, for every call, there is a consecration that follows calls. Just because God called you does not mean you will become. Don't let people die because of rebellion. No. There are people here who have been called by now. You should have been commanding wealth of nations for the sake of the kingdom. But because you have chosen to do it your way, the foolishness of God's way, you see God's way does not make sense. You can push him and say, I know how to make money by myself. And you keep struggling and going around in circles. If you patiently followed his way, you would have stepped into your Rehoboth.
in one minute can someone cry and say Lord I repent I return I return I repent I repent I'm tired of going my own way tired of creating my own programs for my life come on someone is praying you're following online pray I'm tired of inventing my own way to live in my life and my destiny I'm ready to return to the blueprint I'm ready to return to the manuscript no matter how you've deviated his mercy can bring you back Lord you called me a worshiper I'm ready to return to my office you called me a worshiper you called me a businessman you called me an entrepreneur for the kingdom take a minute to pray that genuine prayer of repentance to repent means to realign to repent means to realign to repent means to realign take a minute let it be genuine repentance from your spirit I cannot lose this call there is so much that is vested upon my life someone is praying In Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray in Jesus name we pray let's sit down so the manifestation of God's desire and plan on the earth depends on the availability the willingness and the yieldedness of the saints now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to give me your rapt attention. I know that the Spirit of God is moving across. But if you can sit on the ground, sit on the ground. Don't worry, we are an organized people. But in this atmosphere, you will still fall down again. So just sit on the ground with your notebook and listen. Hallelujah. What kind of vessel is God looking for? This is what I want you to listen now. Hales, kabarako shatiasa. More more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life sing more love more power more of you more time sing more now listen carefully as much as God desires to use everybody the unfortunate reality is that he may not use everybody because there are conditions to be used by God. This latter rain you see that is already sweeping across the nations, this latter rain, this end time outpouring 
that is resting on families, churches, men, women of God, captains of industry. Refer to my message redefining the coming revival. I give perspective there to how the move of God happens, how a true revival happens. But I want to show you, and this is the point of emphasis, this is the zenith of my discourse tonight. What kind of a vessel is God looking for? What kind of a man? I want to describe for you the kind of man the Spirit is looking for. That as the Holy Spirit is moving across Abuja, moving across Koinonia, moving across the churches in this nation, moving across men of God, not every man of God will be featured in this move of God. Not every church will be featured in this move of God. God wants everybody to be part of it, but there are conditions. Not every financier will be involved. I have read this in scripture, but I have seen this in my visions many times. God called 12 disciples. It was in their destiny for all of them to serve his purposes. But one by one, from Judas to doubting Thomas, they began to redefine their destinies. There was no place written in the Bible that Judas was the one who would betray Jesus. Mm -mm. There was a prophecy about betrayal, but not Judas. He made himself available. Can I tell you, like a movie, there are many parts to play. You can choose to work for the devil and choose a part that fights the program of God, even if you are a Christian. Or you can choose to align to the ways of God and find yourself promoting his purposes. But work with me as I show you by the Spirit of God and I sense that there will be mighty impartations as I'm reading this because I started sensing this even while I was praying at home. Do you know why this message is coming with such spiritual reactions? Because it is a cry in the heart of the Spirit. Smith Wigglesworth will call it the cry of the Spirit. It's something that is at the center of God's program now. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Sit down and prepare to write. What kind of a vessel is God looking for? Is he looking for everyone? Will he use everyone under any condition? No. Number one, God is looking for a man who desires to know him write it down this is the first kind of man God is looking for this is the first kind of man the latter rain is looking for this end time anointing you see this end time outpouring this grace that will turn men literally to be like gods is not looking for every kind of vessel God is looking for a man a people a vessel that have an ever-increasing desire to know him. Daniel 11:32. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. The people that do know their God is the reason why the spirit of revelation is preceding the move of God. Because it is impossible to serve a God you do not know. It is impossible to be passionate about a God you do not know. 
Jeremiah chapter 9, 23 and 24, the Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. It says, neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. Next verse, it says, but let him that glory it. Believers hear this, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. That I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, righteousness in the earth. The knowledge of God. The kind of men that this latter rain will fall on. Are men and women who are ready to pay the price to know God. Not just to pay the price to receive from God. The price to know God. I can tell you by the authority of scripture and I can tell you from experience it takes time to know God no matter how God simplifies himself it would take time and the grace of the Spirit for any man to know God first John or John 17 John 17 and verse 3 Jesus is praying and he says this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Remember in Exodus chapter 3, when Moses had an encounter with the God of the Bible, that should be what verse now? Let's try 13, I think 13 to 17. Moses, Exodus, is that it? Okay, beautiful. Moses said unto God, follow carefully, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? He's asking God, what shall I tell them? What shall I say? Give me an answer. 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Reading to 17. And, the God, and God said, moreover, unto Moses, thus shall thou say to the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Two more verses. Go, he says, gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done unto you in Egypt. The final verse. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites, to a land flowing with milk and honey. But Moses needed to know the person sending him. Those that God is going to be using are people who pay the price to know God. Refer to my teaching, Knowing God. I have done several teachings about knowing God. But for the purpose of this discussion, according to scripture, there are three major ways that we learn God. Number one, we know God by studying his character. Number two, we know God by studying his ways. Number three, we know God by studying his power. These are the three dimensions to learning God. Let me repeat again. We know God by learning his character. We know God by learning his modus operandi, his ways. We know God by learning his power. Paul prayed this in Ephesians chapter 1. And he prayed that the eyes of our understanding be flooded with light. He says that we may know the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance through the saints. And then verse 19, the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. That was his prayer. You want to know God? God can be known. Not all of him can be known in this side of God's kingdom because our minds as potent as they are, are still finite. We cannot exhaust the knowledge of God. It will take eternity to learn God. Even in heaven, we will still be learning God. 
but that he's broken himself to dimensions that can be affordable for our minds and our spirits to receive. We can know God by learning his character. His